This video is the first in a series of three that will show how to create the nacelles. The nacelle is fairly similar to the fuselage, and in that we will follow a very similar procedure, mostly consisting of tracing the drawing and extruding the different sketches that we make from the different views to get intersections in space that we can use as guides to create a multi-section surface. Here in the top-down view, it's fairly symmetrical. It may not be exactly symmetrical, but it ended up looking close enough when I made it symmetrical. And that's the name of the game, close enough. And moving the pylon. Just so it's in the same place once we get the in the cell there. And then pylon sort of gives us a reference of where the center of the engine is. You can see from the front view how the nacelle has sort of a unique oblique shape to it as opposed to just a simple elliptical cross section. So keep that in mind. Okay, so once the nacelle is figured out, The sketch that we created was on a plane that was centered within in the z-direction of the nacelle, so that's why it's floating up here now as opposed to down on the same plane as the drawing. And I took away the symmetry so that we get the separate starboard and port side contours of the port side nacelle. Actually, we're going to put them both in there and then go back and create a new sketch where we just project either one or the other into it. You could just create one one sketch and then project and reflect into the other, but either way, same result in the end. Just make sure that the port side and starboard contours are two different sketches. Now continuing with the top and bottom. Add some color to it so it's a little easier to see on the white background. play the game of moving the control points to try and get what we want. That looks reasonable. Now we'll do the bottom sketch once we label that. So a new sketch on the XC plane. Notice that I'm using the pylon planes, the planes from the pylon part. I guess it's actually the engine part that we just built the pylons first. So the engine, the cell, and pylons will all be in this one part. And eventually we'll move them all into the combined part with everything else, with the rest of the parts of the plane. Now I'm going to create three different planes one for the forwardmost point of the nacelle, which is this one. And we'll create one offset from here, which will be 
essentially the back edge of the leading edge of the nacelle, which kind of lines up with this part portion of the drawing. And you'll see how we use that later. And then the third will be the trailing edge of the nacelle. We'll create that in a second. First, I'm going to project these into the, into the top sketch. Oh, wow, let's add the, the aft plane now. This is just the trailing most point, the aft most point of the nacelle. And you can tell I'm just freehanding it and then rounding to the nearest number when I constrain for set the plane. And again, project this into the contour sketch. We'll constrain the aft points to this plane. The leading edge we might cut later, but we're not going to constrain points, especially because we have this curve in the front. Sometimes having a lot of extra hanging off the front edge helps you to get some better curvature, a more precise curvature. Same thing with the bottom contour. Now the top views. So since we created these both in one sketch, we can edit them both in one sketch and it'll update the other two sketches automatically that we created before. Those other two sketches being the sketches that have those contours separated. And now I'm cutting off the front and back, although there shouldn't be any on the back, of the sketches. I'm using the aft leading edge plane too, by the way. We'll create the leading edge separately later. The, the leading edge has somewhat of a tricky shape. We'll, we'll walk through that in one of the later videos. So now we move on to extrusions of the contours. So you organize the tree a little bit. So define work objects, get your new geometrical set. Um, first, I'm going to create a, a center line, which I'll extrude into a center plane for the engine. This will be where the top and bottom contours need to be projected or intersected. Top view center line to differentiate it from the side view center line. And the extrusion button. And now we'll extrude our top contour far enough that we get it through the center line.
and now we'll create our side view center line, same way as we did for the fuselage, where we project the top and bottom contours into a new sketch, and then create a spline running through the middle, where we have the spline constrained as the midpoint of several lines connecting the top and bottom contours. Again, the test of whether or not you have enough points, control points. And these midpoint lines is if you wiggle them back and forth, you don't see any major change to the spline. And we're really just going to go all out here. Okay. Now we'll extrude this. Once we name it. And put it in the right geometric set so it doesn't get lost. And well, before we extrude it, I'm going to name the other extrusions. Okay. This one you need to make extruded far enough so that you get it past this contour which we need to either project or extrude and intersect with the side view center line that we just created. It doesn't need to go through the top and bottom contours but although it's very close to the center line to start with it's not within the same because the center line has some curvature, this is just the plane. Now we'll create a new geometrical set called intersections within this nacelle. Extrusion intersections. And we will intersect these nine extrusions to get the four guide curves that we want. Well, I guess it's six extrusions, four guide curves. And we will continue in the next video.